Knowing how to manipulate people's emotions is a superpower that can be used for good or for evil. <laughs> Melodies are one of the most powerful ways we can do that, so in this video I'm going to show you 5 emotions you can create using melodies. But before we do that, we need to know what makes a great melody in the first place, so let's get back to basics. Firstly is simplicity. Most tracks only use 3 or 4 chords in their progression, and the melody is also simple and will complement the chords. 2. Repetition of rhythm and pitch. This will make them super memorable and stick in your head. Number 3. Variations and little flourishes. A great melody will usually repeat a couple of times and then change to either go up or down at the end of 2 or 4 bars to loop us perfectly back to the beginning of the melody. You can see this technique being used in some of the biggest melodies ever written. So now let's look at the four different tools we can use for crafting our melodies. First is the key or scale, which is a collection of notes that sound good together, kind of like a paint palette. We use the same scale for the entire track, so that's chords, bass line, and melody. This is really the most important element for setting the emotion. Two, the rhythm of the melody, which is how it dances around the rest of the elements in your track. Three, the pitch, which is the different, um, Pitch. Allow myself to introduce myself. That each of your melody notes hits. And number four is the wild card, but it's only going to make sense in a few minutes. Right, remember I mentioned this could be used for either good or evil? Well, sorry, I'm all about the good most of the time. So I'm going to create a melody in each emotion, and I want you to guess which emotion it is. They'll get harder as we go along, and you might also recognize a couple of these melodies. Okay, so for the first melody, we're going to start with C major, which is the simplest of scales because it only uses all the white notes from C up to C. We could also use a pentatonic scale for this emotion, which I'll show you in a minute. Great, palette set. Now let's get on to the rhythm. I'm going to create a fairly simple rhythm for this. So we're starting off with our chord progression that sounds like this, and I've hit scale mode in C major. So I'll show you really quickly how I make these nice sounding chords. If we start with the root note of our chord, which is the C, and then we just, in scale mode, count two notes up a time, skip a note there, skip a note there. We've got our standard major triad. To make a seventh chord, we count up seven from the root of the chord. So that's the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and it sounds like this. Nice. And then the ninth would sound like this even nicer. Now a chord inversion is when you just move the order of the notes within the chords. These are the same notes in the chord and we're just going to move them down an octave to bring everything closer together so it sounds a bit more professional. So this is what we've got. Great, so I've turned my metronome on, I've set my grid to eighths because that's about the smallest you usually want for a melody apart from something I'm going to show you soon. So now let's work out the melody rhythm just on the root note of our scale, which is C. And I'm just going to keep things simple and try and work this so the rhythm works with our chords and the beat. Nice. And I'm just going to repeat that. Every bar or two you want to repeat the melody rhythm. A slight variation and now I'm just going to repeat that as well. Hear how it's complementing the chords? Now let's get on to the pitch of each note. Once I've programmed in the rhythm in the root note, which makes it super simple, I can then start moving the notes up and down using the scale feature in my DAW. And remember, what emotion is this making you feel? So a few tips on what we can do now. We can repeat the same note until it gets boring and then we can change the note and that's going to help make the melody memorable. And we also want to be looking at using the notes from within the chords that we're using as well. So we've got the C, which is the root note of the entire track. So that's great. Let's move up and then we'll get to the E, which is also in this chord, and then we'll get to the G as well. So we're going to skip the F and go straight up to the G for this chord. And then we'll go back down to the E and it's going to sound like this. Which sounds nice, right? Now, the G is what's known as the dominant of the key of C major. Now, I know that sounds complicated, but all it means is it's the fifth note in that scale. And whenever you hit the fifth note of a scale, that's called the dominant, and it's always strong, and it's likely to sound good in your melody. So now I'll change the pitch of this part of the melody so the notes can resolve back to end that progression. And we can see we've got F here and F in our chord. Nice! So I really quickly want to explain the difference between stepwise and leapwise when you're working with melodies. Stepwise is when you are going up in progression like that, and leapwise would be a big jump, something like this. 
which you can also use, but just so you know those different terms. Now remember, not only do we want repetition of rhythm, we want repetition of pitch as well. And you can see that this is kind of leading you up in a natural slope and then leading you back down. So we're taking our listeners on a journey. I'm going to repeat this and make that small flourish or change to lead back to the beginning of the melody. Let's add this slight change. So we're leading them up towards the end of the progression, which should give us a bit more of an uplifting feel. Time for a sip. Okay, now I want to show you a melody using a minor pentatonic. Now, a pentatonic scale is much like a normal seven note scale, except we're only using five of the notes. This makes it even simpler. First, I'm going to program in the rhythm of this melody. And here's the chord progression. So just using the root note, we're going to use sixteenths and go a bit more rapid on this one. Let's repeat that. Same rhythm pattern. and then a slight variation at the end. Again, you can hear how simple it is and how it works with the chords underneath. Once again, let's use the scale feature and just move the pitch of some of these notes. You'll start to recognize this. Just using the scale feature. Now you'll notice I'm hitting the root note quite a lot in this melody. That's a very important trick to make sure it really drives home what key this track is in and makes it super memorable for people. Notice also the repetition of rhythm and the pitch shape. Boom! Did you guess the emotion for number one? Of course, it's happy or joyful. Using a major scale is going to be the most important part of this. But as you saw, you could also use a pentatonic scale if you prefer, and having simple strong triads that want to resolve back to the root of the key. Okay, for the second melody, we are going to start with a minor scale. If you want to keep things super simple, you can use A minor, which just uses all the white notes from A up to A. Okay, so let's get the rhythm in, just on the root note of the track. We're going for a bit of a slower tempo this time. Now, if you've got a MIDI keyboard, you can tap along with your chords which is much quicker than programming it all in, which is what I've just done, but this is the rhythm we've gone for. So repetition of rhythm, all on the root notes of the track to keep it simple. Boom. Now let's switch to pitch and once again we're going for repetition and simplicity. So now we're going to move the notes around using the scale template. So I'm going to hit scale so we're only seeing the notes from within that key. Makes it much easier. And remember the fifth, which is the E, is the dominant of this scale. One, two, three, four, five. So let's hit lots of those. I've sped the tempo up a bit. It's worth noting that the lyrics can help make something a particular emotion as well. All you Alan Walker fans out there would have recognized this. And what's the emotion that we were going for? Sadness or melancholy. Now it's worth noting at this point that emotions are subjective. So some people might listen to a melody and feel something different. But mostly, if you want to create a sad melody, choose a minor key to work in. Now for number three, we're focusing more on the tempo and the rhythm of the melody than the pitch. So we could do this in a minor key or a major key. Ooh, the plot thickens. Once again, we're going to go for rhythm first, but this time I'm going to focus on using a lot of 16. This is when a bar is split into 16 sections. So it's very fast and very repetitive. So here's our chord progression. And now let's tap in the melody, just on the root note. So we're in A minor again. We've got 16th selected and we can slow the tempo down if it's going to help. So we're just repeating that rhythm. And once again, notice how simple and repetitive this is. A mistake I see new producers making all the time is trying to overcomplicate things. Great, so now let's change the pitch using the scale mode. Now for this melody, again, we're hitting the dominant a lot of times, and this is what we've got. All of you 90s kids out there, you'll have recognized this melody. And what's the emotion I was going for? High energy and excitement. Okay, this fourth one is one of my personal favorites. We're gonna really play with the heartstrings here. Really toy with them. 
Okay. Now you can use either a minor or a major scale again for this emotion because all the magic comes from using what are known as sevenths or ninths. And remember we looked at those a few minutes ago. Yes you can use those in the chord progression but if we're using a melody over normal triads we're going to be adding those seventh and ninth intervals using the melody. So first let's put the rhythm in. And the rhythm is not so important for creating this particular emotion. I'm going to play the chords and the rhythm of the melody together and in Ableton you can actually view both at the same time so I'm going to show you how to do that too. So let's play it. We'll select both. There are the chords. And we can see our melody follows the shape of the chords and the rhythm of our chords, repeating them and strengthening them. Great, now let's start moving the pitches of these notes around. So we're repeating the rhythm once again, we're repeating the shape of the pitch jumps and then we're changing the end of that melody to loop round to the beginning. You recognise this track? What a beauty! Now, what's the emotion we're trying to create here? Well, for me, I would call it nostalgia. Just that real heart melter moment. And why is it working? Well, one, we've got the seventh and the ninth chords in the chord progression itself, but our melody starts by hitting the seventh of the scale and it just instantly plucks that heartstring. Oh, my favorite. Okay, for the fifth emotion, the scale is really important and we're gonna use a strange sounding scale called the Phrygian mode. And you can see the intervals between each note in this scale are different from a normal minor scale or a major scale. And that's why this is called the Phrygian. If you want to learn more about modes, I'm sticking a video right there. Now, this is where we're gonna throw in the wild card as well. But first, let's program in the melody rhythm. Once again, we're using a combination of note lengths and keeping it simple and repetitive. Now, there's actually no chord progression for this example, so we're just going to program this to work with the beat. Anyone who guesses this track already wins the internet today. Next thing we're going to do is move the pitches, and this is where the Phrygian mode really comes into play. First we'll hit scale mode so we only see the notes from within the scale of A Phrygian, and then we'll start moving some of them around. So this little interval between the A and the B flat is really that very small interval that gives a friggy and that really kind of dark feeling. Any guesses yet? And now for the wild card, what I'm going to do is add a few pitch bends to this. First, I'm actually going to change the instrument. So I've changed to a synth. I've got a basic saw wave and I programmed in a plus seven and a minus seven semitones for the pitch wheel range. And now I'm going to go into the MIDI clip and just program in some of those pitch bends. So we can see here, already done some of them if we go and select MIDI control, pitch bend. We've got these down pitch bends. So now let's have a listen to it. Recognize that now? Let's get some reverb. Absolute filth. So it's a bass line, yes, but it's the main melody of the track. Adding spice to your melodies with tricks like pitch bend and accidentals, which is using notes from outside the scale you're working in, is a great way to enhance the emotion you're trying to convey. So what emotion are we conveying with this song? Sexiness. And that Phrygian mode coupled with the pitch bends help us really get that naughty feel. You naughty naughty, you teasing me. But even if you master everything I've shown you in this video, it's completely useless if your listener gets bored and clicks away before they finish listening to your track. So in this video, I show you the seven secret melody tricks that professional producers use to hook you into listening to their music from beginning to end. And you might be surprised when you see how they do it. If you enjoyed this video though, give me a like. And if you wanna help support my channel, you can subscribe here too. Thank you so much and I will catch you over at that next video.